Oh, I'll tell you a good story. So in this movie, Mike and I were both obsessed with getting the best time lapse. So we would have basically competitions between who could get the best time lapse of the day. And so Mike had, a, Mike had, what were you shooting at the time? I was shooting with a PD-150, Mike was shooting with something else. And we would go off and we would do our things and we would often be in the same loca location. So it was who could get the best shot of the best time lapse in the same way. One time we were, had, okay, there's a wall called the Malacan in Cuba, which is right up against the edge of the ocean. So the waves, you know, come crashing. But the tide was way out, and so there's all these rocks and stuff. And Mike and I had scaled down this wall, you know, oh dropped down at least like 14 feet into these algae-covered rocks because we wanted to shoot back at the city and see the clouds sort of going over the top of a van. No, 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 we were shooting well, the flag. Right. We were shooting the flag. Look at that, I'm lying. Yeah, she you. was lying. She's telling a story, but. <laughs> No, there was like this jigsaw puzzle. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Okay. This is like, in the movie, this is literally two seconds. There's one shot of a flag that's a jigsaw puzzle. And it's on the Malacan, on one of the walls. It's and an, we love American it. It's an American flag, right? Or is it a Cuban flag? No, it's a Cuban flag. That's like a puzzle. It's a, <laughs> it was a Cuban flag that was made out of little puzzle, puzzle pieces, pieces. And the puzzle pieces were breaking apart. So it was like the sort of dissolving of the, of the Cuban revolution. Like Cuba's a puzzle, like a something very cool. Anyway, this, this flag this was on the side of a wall by the Malacan, right? So if you can imagine, there's a wall, here's the city and the four-lane highway, the street, and then there's this wall, and then there's all these rocks, and then the sea coming in. And waves. And so we decided to, <laughs> we decided to rappel down into this, like, you know, sea, these rocks and this, like, algae and stuff. So we get down there. I've got the really super expensive Leica that I almost don't entirely know how to use. Mike has got the other camera, and we're here to shoot this thing. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, one of these like Cuban tempests just like comes through and the storm just appears from out at the sea and suddenly the waves are like crashing in. And, and like, we're Mike stuck. Is, we're just totally stuck down there. Like Mike, I'm like stuck holding my camera above the water like this as the water's coming in. Mike is like running around on the rocks, slipping, falling. We haven't realized in our urgency to capture this image that while it was quite easy to just jump down in there, there's absolutely no way Wait, to, to get, crawl out. To get back up. Because it's like a 12 foot wall or something like that. How do we get out? Well, there was a pipe sticking out. And I remember I gave you my camera and I climbed up the, put a foot on the pipe and like. This is a love story as it turns really out. Really like, use my muscles to pull my body all the way up this wall and and then Britt handed up the camera gear, and this was the part that was, it was so dramatic, actually, I remember it now, it was so dramatic. I reached my hands down the wall to try and grab Britt, but our hands wouldn't touch, we were too far, it was too far, if she was stretched all the way up, she couldn't touch my hands and I couldn't reach her. So the only thing that could happen is, she had to jump, and I had to catch her. But if I didn't catch her, she was standing on like a two inch ledge, so she would have slipped and fallen and died. Like, fallen into the I rocks. I would have died, but I would have fallen into the rocks. And I probably <laughs> would have drowned, or had a concussion, or been seriously wounded. So, the waves are coming in, and like, I'm reaching down, and she's reaching up, and... And Mike is like, just jump. I'll catch you. So I did. And I did. And then I pulled her up the wall. And that's how most of this film was made. Yeah. Totally, everything was a near-death experience. And that is worth two seconds of the movie. Check it out right now. The Malacan is a, it's not just simply a promenade, it's a big wide open space. Just the word, the Malacan, produces very strong emotions in people, positive emotions, ideas of liberation. You strong emotions in people, positive emotions, ideas of liberation. You I think when you're making a film that is this sort of handmade and guerrilla style filmmaking, it can only come together and get off the ground because you have a group of people around you who are helping you put all this sweat equity into it to make something happen. And we had a great group of people. We had a great group, great of, people. group of people, yeah. yeah. Craig Wedren, who is an incredibly talented musician and composer, came down to Cuba to make music from his heart about, you know, the place. And literally wrote almost 90 minutes. 90 of minutes of music, yeah. This is like a musical film, and the music is just unbelievable. He was really our creative collaborator in the biggest sense, and we love him.
Everybody that came together on this to make this like little tiny baby of a movie happen was really amazing. Nick Shoemaker, our producer. Charlie, Jill Johnstone, Nick's dad, my mom, Herman, Valerias, people who trusted us with our vision, believed in us, and let us go, let us do what we wanted to. We didn't, you know, we didn't have to follow any rules. My parents, for instance, flew down to the Havana Film Festival and were out on the streets in like boxers and ballerinas t-shirts, making photocopies of flyers so that we could hand them out all over the university. So that this was the kind of like, you know, handmade like love and energy that went into just making this film and, and then, you know, trying to birth it into the world. And then, of course, most importantly, our, our characters. Paula and Anya and your Denny's and Sergio and their families who we all got to know really well and took care of us and took us under their, under their wings and they treated us like we were their own kids of their yeah, own. Yeah, we're so, so grateful to them and we hope they love the movie. I hope that we were able to convey something that is intangible about the Cuban culture and Cuban people, um, their sort of beauty and their fearless hospitality and their their dance, you know, the way that they are and that's sort of an intangible quality that I don't think you can really talk about and yeah. hopefully the imagery and the movement and the rhythm and the hopefully some of that, you know, came across.